All right, you guys, this is Ross. So I figured uh, in today's video, we've talked a little bit about orchard culture, uh, you know, having a garden, having a successful garden, a successful orchard. We like to talk a lot about the ecosystem of pests and even diseases. You know, having an orchard is really synonymous with pest pressure and, and disease pressure. Same thing with the garden. You know, we're, we as growers are always trying to do things, we should be trying to do things to really influence the, the pests in our yard or the insects in our yard, uh, even the wildlife in our yard to uh, set up the right ecosystem so that we can enjoy these crops and these different things to the, you know, to the best that we can. Um, one of the things that I really like to do, and I've been telling you guys this and really preaching this for a while is, don't just plant your fruit trees or don't just plant your garden and that's it. You know, have a wide variety of plants that do different things. Um, you know, whether it's plants for chop and drop like comfrey or different ornamental grasses that you can grow. Uh, I have plenty of comfrey right down here underneath a lot of my pear trees. Even behind me is um, a lot of my stone fruits and I also have comfrey there. And this is just great to you know, cut this stuff um, and then place it just literally right underneath the trees that I would like to see grow uh, quicker or to, you know, really improve the health of a particular tree or a particular plant or to add this to a, a compost pile, as an example. Uh, the other things that I really like to tell you guys about is, you know, plant, like I said, plant those flowering plants, those plants that really encourage beneficial insects to come to your yard and by doing that we're going to really encourage we're going to give them the food right so if you want to encourage any sort of ecosystem changes in your yard or your orchard or your garden even on a larger scale you need to have the food there for whatever it is that you want to attract so if you want to have you know more bees you have to just have more flowers that bees uh, will actually seek the pollen from. Um, this particular plant right here I find to be really special and that's really why we're doing this video is that this is bronze fennel. And fennel comes in different, many different types. There's bulbing fennel, there's this one here which is quite, it's more of an ornamental type fennel. It's really uh, bronze and has this nice color to it. And uh, that's typically why people actually plant it in their yards potentially as an ornamental, but I like it actually as a food source slash something to also attract beneficial insects because what inevitably ends up happening every summer is that the amount of light changes every year and it triggers these many of these flowering plants into flowering. And the fennel um, particularly will put out these flower uh, these very small flowers on these heads that are really quite numerous and reliable and plentiful. And these little heads here of fennel, once they flower, they're then pollinated and it attracts so many different types of wasps, actually. And particularly, I think you could call them parasitic wasps, although I don't know every species of wasp that um, visits this particular plant is a, technically a, a parasitic wasp, but you know, parasitic wasps, they do a great job of actually eating the bad insects or killing the bad insects. Not only do they look for pollen, but they actually attack some of the predators that are attacking your fruit trees or attacking your garden. Um, and for me, I think it's a really great plant, especially for an orchard to have, and not only just to have these, you know, to attract the parasitic wasp, but also to have other plants that really give a similar benefit like uh, sedum, as an example. So sedum is actually flowering kind of right now, now that we're a bit, you know, later, later towards the end of the summer, beginning of the fall, where you then have sedum right here, which has, again, these very many numerous um, flowers that then open and attract the right kind of insect that you want around your yard. This is the food source to then attract those wasps to then um, actually have, of course, 
a good ecosystem in your yard. It's, re it's really just that simple. And I, th I don't think people really, you know, think about this enough. Um, or they plant these plants for ornamental purposes and that's it. When in reality, they're doing a lot more than I think they know. Um, so for me, I think this is, this is top of the line for me in terms of uh, attracting the right insect, but also it's a nice perennial food source that I don't think people give enough credit to as well. And that, you know, fennel to me is really one of my favorite vegetables to grow, wh whether that's the bulbing fennel or if it's this one here for ornamental purposes. Uh, I eat this particular fennel all the time because what I'm doing now is I'm actually going around once the flowers have set, uh, the flowers um, produce seed, and then now there's seeds on the plants and they are dried. Now I have dried fennel at the ends of the flowers, or there's no really, not really any flowers left at this point. And I didn't have to do anything. I didn't have to uh, intervene. I didn't have to harvest the bulb or the head of flower and then put that in the oven or put that in the dehydrator as an example. This just did it all for me. Nature did it all with very little work. And now I'm, all I'm doing is coming in here with my pruning shears, going down to the base of the head, the stem of the head, I should say, clipping that off. And now I have many, many fennel seeds. And these fennel seeds are great for culinary purposes. I don't think enough people really use them in their cooking. I don't know why that is exactly. I'm sure it's a cultural thing, but you know, as a, someone who has an Italian heritage, uh, really just anybody who likes food, I think this is such a great crop to harvest these fennel seeds and to use them. Uh, I'm sure they have some nice medicinal purposes that I'm sure somebody might in the comments wanna put there. Um, for me though, I think what's really nice, you know, as a health standpoint though, is that this is maybe not a seed that you would typically eat all the time, but if you eat it, you know, every so often as something, uh, you know, whether you have like a, you know, you put this in your stir fries every so often, you bake with it, you cook with it, or you can even put this in maybe like uh, some kind of uh, smoothie or something like that, some kind of health shake. Uh, this is just great for an extra source of fiber, you know, and that's what we're all trying to be, right, is a little healthier nowadays, especially with COVID and people are becoming more and more health conscious, I, th I think. And, um, you know, just getting that extra source of fiber and a different source of fiber, you know, the more diverse different types of fiber we eat in our diet on a more consistent basis, the more diverse our microbiome is and the, the stronger our microbiome is. So it's, it's really interesting learning about that little point with our health and our, our microbiome and our stomachs to then actually realize that the same thing actually you would want in nature. You would want, if you're gonna compost, you're gonna put down different plants down here at the bottom of our trees to then eventually turn into compost and feed the soil and feed the, the life in the soil, the microbes of the soil you wanna give them many different types of food. You don't wanna just give them comfrey. You don't wanna just give them some grass clippings or, or wood chips. You know, uh, yeah, that's fine and dandy if you got that in such a high quantity or one of those in such a high quantity. But I think it's probably better, at least I imagine the science is probably saying at this point that it's better to have a more diverse set of different, um, you know, biomass for the soil. So the same thing is really for us as humans. And um, so that's why I really love it is an extra source of fiber, an extra source of, the, of, of a seed. You know, we, uh, there's so many seeds that we actually eat on a daily basis. I don't know if you guys know this, you know, even rice is a seed, you know, corn is a seed. Um, there's so many seeds that we eat, but we don't think of them as seeds. We think of them maybe as grain um, or something else that typically we should be eating, I think, in general, more seeds than we probably do on a, on a daily or weekly basis. I also really like with the bronze fennel, you can eat the leaves. Um, so this is nice just to add, maybe you pick, you're pickling something and you don't have seeds, or maybe you're cooking a little bit and you want a little bit of that licorice anise flavor to it. You could just chop this up and throw that into your jar of pickles or your jar of whatever you're pickling. 
Um, and for me, I really, excuse me, I really do like this, the, uh, the leaves on these. I think it's highly, highly underrated. Um, and then of course, if you had a bulbing fennel, unlike the bronze fennel, which I am growing in the garden, which should produce some bulbs a little bit later down in the fall, um, you know, you can enjoy the bulbs. And the bulbs, in my opinion, um, are something that's really nice for um, cooking. You know, maybe even you could say it's slightly like a replacement for onions. Uh, you know, I know some people don't like onions or tolerate them well. I personally don't think I could ever really replace shallots or garlic in my cooking with fennel, but it is a nice alternative. Maybe you don't want as many onions in there. Maybe you throw in a little bit of yellow or white onion and you throw in a little bit of bulb fennel and uh, it's just nice. It's a nice little different thing that um, you might end up cooking and you might end up realizing that you love it. And the licorice flavor that typically fennel possesses is kind of mild when you end up cooking it for a longer period of time. Um, so yeah, I think uh, there's so many uses for this plant that it is highly, highly underrated, I think. And I, I can't personally think of another plant with so many uses. I mean, even if I wanted to just grow, instead of the bronze fennel, I wanted to grow just the bulbing fennel, it would still produce the seed, it would still produce the leaves, and it would still produce the bulbs. So I would get even more value out of it uh, than this bronze fennel potentially. But you know, this is more of an ornamental thing than the uh, the bulbing typical Florence fennel that you would see. So it depends on what you want. Um, but again, I can't really think of a a plant that has so many uh, positives to it for the ecosystem, but also for, you know, my own health. And uh, is there another vegetable flowering plant? I guess you could plant uh, dill would be kind of similar in that you could use the seeds, uh, even I guess a mustard you could do as well, where you could let the mustard go to seed and then harvest the seed and then make your own uh, mustard out of that. Um, yeah, I think, uh, I think probably dill and mustard are up there, but, um, for me at least, this is one of the better ones for sure. And, you know, some of the others I do grow for ornamental purposes, but also for the ecosystem. Again, is that sedum. We have comfrey as well, which the comfrey really loves to flower. You can chop and drop that all the time. The honeybees love it. And it really does depend on what it is that you're trying to attract, right? Are you trying to attract a honeybee or are you trying to attract a parasitic wasp? You know, I think the the wasps in particular are really what are the money makers for pest pressure. Um, whereas the bees are there really for the better pollination. But I think in general, the you know, these big shade trees that you might have are really the what's going to do it in terms of your pollination um, as they flower different times of the year, especially the maples, I believe it is, that flower first. And they're really that first food source, I think, for, uh, for honeybees and bumblebees um, and different, you know, pollinating insects like that. So anyway... I hope you guys got something out of this. I'm going to continue to harvest my, um, my fennel and uh, I'll be on my merry way. So take care, guys. Hit that subscribe button. We'll see you for the next one. Take care.